Since, you know, the first time we played together when we were 14, uh, been sort of rivals, you know, he was always the guy to beat. He's done a lot for golf around the world, uh, especially in South Africa. He's a world traveler, he likes to support all the events around the world, and, and uh, that sort of thing deserves what he's getting. And he's been incredible for the game of golf, and also personally incredible to me. He's been a great friend and uh, really helped me a lot in my career. He's, you know, giving back in the game of golf as well. You know, not just his performance, but in the game of golf and also off the course. He does a lot of great work. I have so many memories of playing with him all around the world and in President's Cups and lucky to be his partner there and, <laughs> and ride on his coattails. <laughs> well deserved that he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, one of the most talented guys that I'll ever play with. Ernie has done a lot for the PGA Tour, but I think he's done more globally. His resume is deep, but you throw in the fact that he's a quality guy and that, uh, you know, he understands what the game is about. There's absolutely no reason why he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. Well, I guess obviously being South African, it's, it's a you know, special meaning to us. It's a big honor for Ernie. He's been a guy who's inspired a lot of youngsters in South Africa. Even someone I looked up to, only being, really only being five years younger than him, he had a big influence on juniors of, of my generation because he was so good at such a young age. It's a fitting honor for him to be inducted and uh, we're all very pleased for him. And, and really, he's still uh, carrying the flag for South African golf right now. His fluid swing and calm demeanor has earned him the nickname, The Big Easy. A moniker that belies the intensely competitive nature boiling just beneath the surface. Ernie Els first burst onto the world stage at the 1994 United States Open at Oakmont, where at the tender age of 24, he prevailed in a playoff to capture his first major championship. Ernie Els is the new champion. Over a career that has spanned more than two decades, Els has taken his talents to the ends of the earth amassing 64 victories and counting worldwide. 29 on the par, a new under par record for the European Tour. Among his many accomplishments, two additional majors, the 1997 US Open at Congressional and the 2002 Open Championship at New Orleans. That's the shot of a winner. Ernie's been a terrific player for a long time. He's been a global player and he's really promoted the game of golf throughout the world, especially back in his homeland, South Africa. To see his success in Europe, see his success here in the United States, it's just a, an impressive career and he keeps adding to it. At the age of 40, we've got the old Big Easy back. He's a guy that deserves the accolade. He's played on every continent and he's been the one guy in the last 20 years to play successfully around the world for a long period of time, where he's played a lot in Europe, a lot in the United States, a lot in Asia, a lot in South Africa, and he's been able to compete traveling that much. He's won heaps of golf tournaments around the world. He's always won here, he's always won overseas. He's played his whole career everywhere. A courageous competitor whose broad shoulders carried the hopes of an entire nation at the 2003 President's Cup. That's as it should be a loving husband and father of two, a tireless advocate for autism research, an enthusiastic ambassador for the game of golf, Theodore Ernest Els is all of these. He has been a major force in golf over the last 20 years and a prolific winner worldwide. Three major championships, two US Open titles, a British Open. He's had a great career and he's getting into the Hall of Fame is well deserved. And I believe that uh, we have a surprise guest to congratulate Ernie Els as well. Uh, some more words of congratulations from a fellow South African. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As the global ambassador to the World Golf Hall of Fame, it is such a thrill to be able to introduce my friend Ernie Els. Ernie, you've been a great champion. You've been a good friend to my family and myself, but you've also been a good friend to the world. Congratulations on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. If anybody deserves it, it's you. You've been a great gentleman, you've been a champion, and the nice thing about it, everybody loves you. 
God bless and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Johan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you see, what can I say? Um, it's been a long journey, you know, coming from South Africa. Um, it's only a couple of miles south, if you haven't been there. <laughs> um, it's so great to see my parents here. Obviously, that's where all this started, really, with my grandfather, as Johan mentioned earlier. Uh, from my mom's side. Um, I took his name. So I'm, I think I'm the, only the third or fourth. Um, and he really instilled, as Johan said, uh, the discipline into myself and, and my brother. Uh, I've got an older brother who uh, also plays the game. Uh, my, my dad, um, he had a hidden talent which he never knew about. <laughs> I guess, you know, he worked so hard um, you know, on trucks and stuff, and you know, his, his father passed away at a very early age, so he had a big family to look after. He was the older, is the older brother um, of seven children, uh, so he was forced to really go out and work. Um, so I guess um, he couldn't quite uh, get to the golf course <laughs> um, and play until he met my mom, and obviously my mom's dad. Um, got him to the golf course, and then within two years, you know, he was a, a one handicap. So that, that tells you about uh, the talent that, that runs in the DNA there. Um, <laughs> any case, um, you know, I've got an older brother, as I mentioned, the older sister as well. I'm the youngest one. Got spoiled very well. That's why I'm here, I think. <laughs> you know, um, my brother is a, is a good player. Um, unfortunately for him, he had a, a disability in, uh, in his left eye. He, you know, he's got no vision in his left eye. So um, although he, he loves the game, plays the game very well, uh, it was very frustrating for him uh, because to play with, a, uh, you know, with one eye has got to be very, very difficult. So um, I've got to give a lot of credit to my, to my brother. Um, he's older than me. You know, he, he wrestled me to death, <laughs> um, but he, you know, instilled a, a, a big competitive drive in me because he was a bit older. You know, I was trying to beat my older brother and couldn't quite do that uh, many times. So I got to thank my brother and then obviously my sister, uh, who nobody really mentions a lot. Um, she had to sacrifice a lot too. You know, um, you know, <laughs> myself and my brother really being sportsmen. Um, with my dad, you know, my sister took a bit of a, uh, a back seat, you know, she didn't play, uh, play golf. Um, and uh, she actually has a great family now where my nephew, believe it, I believe will be in the World Golf Hall of Fame one day. He's a, he's a great young player. So there's a bit more uh, onto the family tree there. Um, you know, my... Uh, my wife, Liesl, you know, you've, you've been around uh, my professional career, um, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, you never saw me uh, play golf as an amateur, thank goodness. Because <laughs> after school I went to the Air Force for two years back in South Africa, you know, we, we had to do two years of military service and um, it's a good thing you never knew me then. <laughs> as Johan says, that's where Theodore and all these other characters came out. <laughs> And played, um, but I'm glad to say that you know we we survived those days, and you know I'm here to tell my story, um, or you untold my story. Um, I met my wife uh, in 1993, and um, you know, Liesl came back from the states. She's a she's a horse woman. She loves her horses, and she worked on horse farms all over the country. And uh, by chance, we met in 1993, and. We both Afrikaans um, speaking people, but we both spoke English to each other <laughs> for some reason that evening. Um, she with a slight American accent, I must add. You know, only spending a couple of months over here, he came back with an American accent. <laughs> Any case, <laughs> um, we hooked up and we haven't left each other since. Um, 
you know, obviously, uh, she's been a, a rock for me uh, through my career. Um, two beautiful children here with Ben here and Samantha. Um, Samantha's becoming quite a sports lady herself now. She's, she's got a pretty good swing, but um, I don't think she's got the patience for it yet. <laughs> and my beautiful son, Ben, who I believe will play the game um, one day. Um, he loves watching me hit golf balls. You know, he'll sit there for hours and just watch the golf ball, you know, take off in the blue sky. And um, really blessed uh, with you guys. Uh, my mom, the taxi driver, for so many years, back in the day, junior golf, um, thank you very much, Ma. Um, you don't get enough credit, uh, um, I think. Uh, you know, you've been, you've been really a rock there as well. So thank you very much. You know, uh, Johan mentioned uh, South Africa uh, for a little bit. You know, we grew up in South Africa um, in, a, in a weird time. And, um, you know, um, when I started playing the game with my brother, you know, um, you know, golf wasn't quite an African sport. You know, we, we, we were known as rugby players, you know, um, or you, you, you didn't quite play golf. So when I was at high school and I went to, came here to the U.S., played in junior golf tournaments and, you know, winning some tournaments, I used to go back to school and the guys would laugh at me, you know, and like, you know, what, what are you wasting your time for playing golf, you know? come to the rugby field. So, um, in Afrikaans, um, now, when I look at some of the players uh, coming through, just, just looking at Louis Oosthuizen and, and Charles Schwarzel, um, Retief, my great friend, who's also Afrikaans, you know, that really says a lot for, our, um, for, for us as, as, Afri as Afrikaan, Afrikaners in South Africa. And uh, to see the South Africa we see today, you know, 20 years ago when President Mandela uh, um, came to basically mainland South Africa because he was on uh, Robben Island for so long, and to see this transformation take place in, in our country in, in this generation, this last 20 years, is truly re remarkable. Um, so much credit has to be given to F.W. de Klerk, our president, and uh, giving the reins to President Mandela. And, and really, the, the two of them, with sport in our country, um, and I'm saying rugby uh, was a great um, um, a tool of bringing the people together. Rugby is a very big sport in our country. Cricket, uh, soccer, football, uh, in the rest of the world, um, and then obviously golf. And I think with our sport and um, our, leader, our leadership in South Africa, really brought the country together. And in, in 20 years since President Mandela uh, came off Robben Island um, you know, to do what he's done, and then obviously our sportsmen, I think uh, it's a great accomplishment for, for our country. So I'm very proud of that. Thank you. But um, I think I'm almost done. But you know, there's, I've brought a lot of guys here. Um, I wanted a lot of South Africans to come, but uh, a lot of my friends have families of their own and stuff to leave the kids at home. Um, but uh, my great friend, um, you know, Dester Blanche, uh, great friend Nika von Rensburg, David Basson, we basically started playing together um, as professionals. Um, I was lucky. I got the, I got the breaks in life. Um, you know, winning tournaments at the right times, you know, and, and, and just getting good breaks. You know, Johan gave me his really good uh, entries into some of his tournaments back in the 90s. He's sponsored so many golf tournaments, and I, you know, I get, got to play in them, got my European tour card. Um, always had a dream to come and play here in, in the U.S., uh, which I eventually did. Um, and again, I got a break in, in winning the U.S. Open in 1994 at Oakmont. Um, you know, the same week as, as Arnold Palmer, a Pittsburgh native, uh, you know, retired from, uh, from the U.S. Open uh, golf. Um, that tournament could have gone anyway. It could have gone to uh, Colin Montgomery. It could have gone to Curtis Strange, who was in there. It could have gone to Lauren Roberts. Um, 
and for some reason I was, I was in the right place at the right time, uh, basically. I made so many putts that, that day, and, and that really set me up uh, to where I am today. If I didn't get that one, um, you know, gave me a 10-year exemption as a 24-year-old and gave me a lifetime exemption on the, on the European tour and obviously in, in South Africa. Uh, that really set me up and it just shows you the fine line um, it takes between, you know, getting going either way. You know, uh, so many times you don't speak of guys who finish second, but so many of my majors were only by by fine lines. I'm saying many. I'm only, you know, the 301. <laughs> <laughs> Not like some of my inductees here. They, they, they're real legends. But um, I'm really honored. Thank you very much to the World Golf Hall of Fame, uh, Jack Peter, your team, uh, the panel that selected us for, for this year's um, um, induction. I really appreciate it um, from my heart. Um, and as a South African, you know, in front of the American audience here, yeah, you know, we really appreciate it from our family and, and friends. Thank you very much.